One night, a husband and wife engage in a playful discussion about their son's future aspirations. The father proposes a unique test, placing a crisp $10 bill, a bottle of fine whiskey, and a Bible on the coffee table. Each item symbolizes a potential career path, banker for the money, drunk for the whiskey, and preacher for the Bible. The couple hides, observing their son's choice as he enters the room. The boy examines each item carefully, starting with the $10 bill, which he sets down. Next, he picks up the whiskey, uncorks it, takes a sniff, and places it back on the table. Lastly, he flips through the Bible and sets it down. To their surprise, the boy pockets the money, grabs the whiskey, and walks away with the Bible under his arm. The father exclaims, Well, how about that? He's destined to be a politician. Earlier today, a man entered a bar and took a seat. A well-endowed blonde waitress approached, offering him a drink and inquiring about food. Glancing at the menu above the bar, which listed a hot dog for dollar two, a cheeseburger for dollar five, and a hand job for dollar ten, the man asked the waitress if she was the one providing the hand jobs. With a grin, she confirmed that she was. The man chuckled and said, Well, wash your hands. I'll have a cheeseburger. A man, his life partner, and his wife's mother decided to embark on a holiday trip to the Holy Land, a place of great religious significance. Unfortunately, during their visit, the man's mother-in-law unexpectedly passed away. The person in charge of handling the deceased, the undertaker, presented them with two options. He explained, you can pay $5,000 to transport her body back to your home for the funeral, or you could choose to lay her to rest here in the Holy Land for a mere $150. After contemplating for a moment, the gentleman responded to the undertaker, saying, I've given it some thought. You should go ahead and send her body back to our home. The undertaker puzzled, questioned why they would choose to spend $5,000 to transport the mother-in-law's body home, when it would be a meaningful gesture to bury her in the Holy Land for only $150. The man replied with a somewhat fearful look on his face, Well, there was a man who passed away 2,000 years ago. His burial took place right here, and after only three days, he miraculously came back to life. I just, well, I just can't take that risk. A man decides to send a text message to his immediate neighbor, whose name is Bob. The text message reads as follows, Bob, I feel really terrible. I'm full of guilt and I feel the need to confess something to you. I've been secretly using your Wi-Fi when you're not around, and to be honest, probably even more than you do. The whole experience has been incredible and fun, so much that I haven't been able to restrain myself. Sometimes it lasts for hours and hours on end. I understand that it's not a valid excuse, but I don't have this privilege in my own home. I can't bear the weight of this guilt any longer. I truly hope you'll accept my most sincere apology. I promise it won't happen again. Feeling an overwhelming sense of betrayal and rage, Bob quickly grabs his gun, goes straight into the bedroom, and without uttering a single word, shoots his wife. Just a few moments later, the man receives another text from his neighbor. Bloody autocorrect, it's going to be the end of me. I meant to say, Wi-Fi. A large number of viewers watch my videos without a subscription. Therefore, subscribe to my channel so as not to miss new videos with funny jokes. An elderly couple visited a sex therapist, and when asked how the therapist could assist them, the old man suggested, Would you be willing to observe us during the act of lovemaking? Although puzzled, the doctor agreed to the request. After several sessions, during which the couple engaged in lovemaking without any issues, the doctor charged them $50 each time. Intrigued, the doctor finally inquired about their intentions. The elderly man explained, Actually, we're not hoping to discover anything. She's a married woman, so we can't use her home for our meetings. I'm also married, so we can't go to my house. The Holiday Inn charges $90 while the Hilton demands $108. So we prefer doing it here for just $50. And the best part is I can claim back $43 for my health insurance. Today, a woman who had lost her husband almost four years ago finally agreed to re-enter the dating world at the urging 
of her daughter. When her daughter introduced her to someone, there was an immediate connection. After six weeks of dating, he invited her for a weekend in Spain. On their first night, as they undressed, she stood there naked except for a pair of black panties while he was in his birthday suit. Curious, he asked, why the black panties? She explained, my breasts are yours to play with, my body is yours to explore, but down there I am still grieving, realizing he would have bad luck that night. The next night was a repeat, but this time he wore a black condom. She asked, what's with the black condom? He replied, I want to express my deepest... As they explore the castle, they encounter a staircase leading to another floor. Immersed in the historical ambience of the castle, the man expresses his amazement to his daughter, saying, Imagine, a long time ago, the king, ministers, and other important people used to ascend these very stairs. To this, the daughter replies, Yes, it's quite apparent. Perplexed, the man asks, Why do you find it so obvious? The daughter responds, Because there weren't any elevators in their time. A petite elderly woman is pulled over for speeding, and the officer approaches her vehicle. After exchanging greetings, he reviews the documentation she has prepared for him and notices her concealed carry license. Curious, he asks, Ma'am, do you have a firearm in the vehicle? With a nod, she answers, Well, yes, sir, I do. The officer Amused by the contrast of the small, 90-pound, 90-year-old lady, smiles. May I ask what type of firearm you have? Without missing a beat, she responds, Yes, sir. I've got a 9 mm in my purse, a .45 in the center console, and a Magnum in the glove compartment. Slightly taken aback, the officer inquires, Is that it? With a hint of humor. Smiling sweetly, the little old lady replies, well, no. I do have a pistol grip shotgun in the trunk as well. Now, thoroughly surprised, the officer raises his eyebrows and asks, Ma'am, what are you afraid of? With an innocent grin, she retorts, Not a goddamn thing! The letter carrier was celebrating his last day on the job after 35 years of service. As he made his rounds, his customers greeted him with well wishes and small gifts. Arriving at the last house on the route, he approached the door. To his surprise, a beautiful woman in a negligee opened the door, invited him inside, and engaged in a passionate encounter. Afterward, she took him to the kitchen, where a breakfast buffet awaited. As he enjoyed his meal, he noticed a $1 bill under his saucer. Perplexed, he asked, what's this for? The woman replied, oh, that was my husband's idea. When I mentioned that you were retiring and I wanted to make you a nice breakfast, he said, give him a buck and that's it. So I decided to do both. An elderly blind cowboy accidentally strolls into an all-girl biker bar, navigating his way to a bar stool. He orders a shot of Jack Daniels. After some time, he hollers to the bartender, hey you, got a blonde joke. Instantly, the bar plunges into absolute silence. In a deep, husky voice, the woman beside him speaks up. Before you unleash that joke, cowboy, I reckon it's only fair, given your condition, that you know five things. The bartender is a blonde girl wielding a baseball bat. The bouncer is a blonde girl carrying a billy club. I'm a six-foot-tall, 175-pound blonde woman with a black belt in karate. The lady to your right is a blonde and a professional weightlifter, and the one to her right is also a blonde and a professional wrestler. Now, ponder it wisely, cowboy. Still keen on telling that blonde joke? The blind cowboy ponders for a moment, shakes his head, and mumbles, No, not if I'm going to have to explain it five times. In a quaint town nestled amid rolling hills, there resided an elderly lady named Miss B., she had been the dedicated organist for the local church for several decades. Despite being in her 80s, her fingers gracefully danced on the organ keys, exhibiting the agility of a young pianist. One Sunday afternoon, the pastor decided to pay Miss B a visit. 
She welcomed him with her customary warm smile, ushering him into her cozy living room adorned with relics of the past, family pictures, and delicate porcelain figurines. While Miss B excused herself to the kitchen to prepare tea, the pastor settled onto the plush sofa. His gaze wandered around the room and something caught his attention, an object on top of Miss B's cherished old pump organ. Atop the organ was a delicate cut glass bowl filled to the brim with water. What perplexed him, however, was the lone condom floating in it. The pastor, a worldly man who had seen many oddities in his life, found this unexpected, especially in Miss B's house. Choosing to remain polite, he resisted questioning her about it. Yet, as the minutes passed, his curiosity became insurmountable. Miss B returned with a tray laden with a teapot, cups, and freshly baked cookies. Despite the delightful spread, the pastor's attention kept returning to the bowl on the organ. Unable to contain himself any longer, he pointed to the bowl and gently inquired, Miss B, if you don't mind me asking, what's the story behind that bowl? Miss B, with a gleam in her eye, responded, Oh, that isn't it just wonderful. A few months back, during one of my evening walks in the park, I stumbled upon a tiny package. It had some instructions written on it saying to place it on the organ, ensure it remains wet, and it would prevent the spread of disease. Since then, I've diligently followed the directions, and you know what? It seems to work. I haven't had a single cold all winter.'